Hey, this is Curry Phoenix channel. Please subscribe, okay? And leave your thumbs up. Yes. Welcome to Fairy Phoenix guys, thank you so much for stopping by. Now guys, before we get into this story, I want to introduce you guys to my choose story, How a Player God Played. This is my book, it is now available on Amazon. And I want you guys to go ahead, click the link in the description and get your copy right now. Well, watch the video first. Now guys, this particular story that I'm about to get into, it has a lot of people at odds simply because the parents of this amazing little boy they were told they were foretold that the child would be severely disabled if they go ahead and carried him into the world they did it anyway now a lot of people are saying as you will hear from the video i'm about to play that that is cruelty that the fact that the child would not have a good quality of life the parent should have not carried the baby into the world now what are your thoughts would you have carried your baby anyway do you think they did the right thing or do you think that is cruelty to the little boy what they're doing or what they did in the first place you go ahead and watch this video and let me know what you think be sure to subscribe okay we begin with a poignant story tonight of love and sacrifice in the face of overwhelming odds. A young couple learns their child will be born with a debilitating medical condition, and they bring him into the world anyway. Now these parents have a medical marvel on their hands. Here's ABC's David Wright. For Brandon and Brittany Buell, the first serious curveball of parenthood came the day after their 17-week uh, ultrasound. Uh -huh. These are his legs, his hands, and are in the air like this. Okay. The scan where the couple first found out they were having a baby boy. The ultrasound tech was acting strange. She got really quiet. And when she got to his head and was measuring it, she didn't say a word. Then, the very next day, the phone rang with sobering news. They told me he had spina bifida. Wow. And how did you process that? I don't really know. I didn't really process it at the time. I couldn't really believe it. Turns out that initial diagnosis was wrong, but the scan showed a severe brain abnormality. Their son's head was not forming properly, the brain almost non-existent. Miraculously, Jackson survived. He's now just over a year old. The doctors didn't expect him to. In fact, it was the sort of pregnancy where doctors, as gently as possible, mentioned the word termination, abortion. It's much too charged a word. It wasn't until 23 weeks pregnant that it was brought up. Hmm. About the options. That we had the option to terminate in the state of Florida until 24 weeks. To put it bluntly, many American families faced with that 17-week scan would not have brought this baby into the world. How many fingers do I see? Jackson's parents gave him a chance. Where do they come from? I can't say, but I bet they have come a long, long way. But in a way, this is the essence of that debate, isn't it? It can be if anybody wants sort to turn of. it Some into it. Some people take it that way, but, but we never. We were, don't try to take it that way. No. Hi, handsome. They did think excited. about termination. I would feel terrible doing something like that. But if they were to tell me he was going to suffer, or he would be in pain, or my life was in jeopardy, then my thought process might have been different. We're Christian, and we, we believe in what we believe in but we still are going to do the best thing for our family, for Brittany, and, and ultimately for Jackson. <laughs> and this is Jackson today, severely disabled, but thriving. For us, this just seems normal. We don't have a, another child, uh, this is the first one. Even just bathing him is a task that requires both parents. You wanna play with your toys? <laughs> is that a yes or was that a no? Where do you put his happiness? He's happy, happy all, almost all the time. He's just like he any is. other baby. He's teething and gassy, so he's cranky often. <laughs> there you go. Good right. job. And he is the sweetest baby. I know we're biased, and that's fine. But Every parent. Yeah, no, of course. Is. But Jackson is not like most other babies. Here's what his brain should look like. Instead, this is Jackson's brain. Only a year later did neurologists at Boston's Children's Hospital come up with a proper diagnosis. Microhydra encephaly. Dr. Heather Olson saw Jackson in August. How much of the brain is there? Um, so very little. Will he ever be able to talk? I would be shocked if he could. Will he ever be able to walk? Independently, very unlikely. There's no prognosis. Doctors are surprised he's made it this far. Do you have any sense as to how long he can survive with this? 
I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball. Um, it really depends on the medical complications. Such a good boy. He's only made it this far with the help of his parents. Jackson gets nutrition through a feeding tube. Burping him involves removing the excess fluid directly from his stomach. He sometimes suffers okay. from mild seizures. Even when he's really calm, sometimes he'll just he'll go into a slight seizure. Is he suffering? I don't think so. He was irritable when I saw him, and there's nothing about this that causes pain, per se. Pain and suffering are not necessarily the same things. In the end, the doctors themselves say that science alone can't answer that question. And what is his quality of life? Again, I met him once, so I don't have a full appreciation of that, but I would ask his parents. Can you press the buttons? How he's able to see the lights on his toy turtle yeah, is baffling, because the cerebrum is so small as to be practically non-existent. You gotta press you the remember. button, mommy can't do it for you. you I'll remind you, see the big red button? You put your hand and then you press it. Like that. And yet his parents, who spend so much time with him, are convinced their son is in there. Yeah. It's so cute when he gets so proud of himself. It is. And he grins. Yeah. It's a cute grin. It is cute. He's so cute. Responding to their love and attention. <laughs> Every day we spend time with him. Every day we play with him. Every day we say, I love you. A hundred million <laughs> times. <laughs> Maybe a little exaggeration, but probably yeah. over a hundred times every single day. No exaggeration. Can you sit up like a big boy? We call him by his name. We say, Mommy's here. Daddy's here. We love you so much. We're so proud of you. You're so strong. You're so smart. He hears those every day from us. Mm -hmm. And sure, maybe I'm biased, but I, I believe that positive reinforcement and talking to him and loving him. That was a big yawn, buddy. I think he he's knows. responding to that very well. Not only that, they feel he loves them back. I love you. They hear him saying so in videos such as this one. I love you. And even if others may not hear it, these parents feel it. But Brittany and Brandon also hear from the naysayers. Whenever they post Jackson's photos and videos online, people write the most terrible things. And we can't fathom what kind of people would one, think something like that about an innocent child, especially one with special needs, and two, actually hit the send button. He's a lucky boy. You guys seem like great parents. We try. We are trying hard. <laughs> Jackson is lucky because many parents would not have given him that chance. It hasn't been easy. A lot of his treatments, including that trip to Boston, are not covered by insurance. They've had to resort to a GoFundMe campaign, which is covering most of their bills for now. Every decision that we have ever made for him have been about his happiness, his comfort, no matter what that meant and no matter what the cost. I feel like Jackson's doing so well and can teach the medical world so much. And we realize that Jackson's life has a purpose, whether you are faith-based or whether you just are scientific and want to see more about medicine, learn more about the human brain. And at the same time, we realize the reality of Jackson, that we're, we're probably going to outlive him. There is an excellent chance of that. We're just trying to give him the best life possible. Knowing that it might be a short one. We realize that. So every day is precious. Ordinary people struggling with an extraordinary burden and doing it with love.